and welcome to Science Wednesday with Fiona and Albert. I'm Fiona and this is my assistant Albert and each week he sets me a challenge and this week's challenge is to build a strongest bridge. So he said, said to me using only the challenge materials build a bridge that spans at least 30 centimetres. So that is 30 centimetres so I've got to try and do that. And he says, if I need help to decide what to do, look at his tips. So these are his tips here. And his first tip is use some books or Lego to make two pillars for your bridge. Use a piece of card, test out the two bridges below. How many pennies can each bridge hold? Well, I haven't got any pennies, but what I have got is I've got some Lego bricks. So, there are my two pillars, and the first bridge, Albert says, just put the paper card on, and then I can put a piece of Lego on there. And you see that the bridge is dipping down. Um, if I keep the Lego, whoop. so that's not really a very good bridge, because any cars that went over it would pretty soon be in the water. So Albert's second suggestion is to have the card curved upwards. So if I do it like that, then I can put my Lego on. And the problem here is that the Lego is going to fall over, but the bridge is only moving down a little bit. And that's because on that first flat one, when the load is on there, it's pressing down and you're getting what they call bending strain. Whereas on the humped back bridge, the load's pressing down and the stress is coming diagonally. So it's making the bridge stronger. And Albert's second tip to make me think about how I could do this was to make some a square and a triangle using bits of card. And so I started making the square and I've just got one more bit to put in. And these are called paper fasteners. And to finish the square, I push the paper fastener through the first hole and then through the second hole and then fold it over. Now Albert says try to squash the cardboard shape. Well that one's easy isn't it? So making a bridge using squares would not be very strong. And then I put a triangle and I fixed two of them together and I can move them about but when I put the third one in place so again using the paper fastener folding it over now I can't move the bits of cardboard they're fixed together and that's a very strong shape so it would be good to make a bridge using triangles now albert's given me cardboard he's given me some wooden sticks he's given me pipe cleaners and straws he's given me cotton buds and he's given me some string and a needle and various types of tape and a pair of scissors. And he's asking me now to think about my bridge. So the first bridge I thought I'd make is just a flat bridge. I'm just gonna get my 
bridge pillars. Now, this is made out of Lego, and the distance between the pillars, as you can see, is 30 centimeters. So that's the length that I've got to span. So, for my first bridge, my flat bridge, I've just put it on like that. And I think you can see straight away that that's not very good. So, on my engineer's journal, which I will design for me, I've drawn a picture of my first bridge. There's the card. And you can see I've written down what happened. The bridge sagged in the middle when I put weights on. I want to make a humpback bridge. So that was when the card was bent. So I've now got another piece of card. What I'm going to do is to put it like that. Now obviously, I need something on top because otherwise the cars or people walking wouldn't be able to get past. So there it is, like that. So that's like this bridge here. This is a humped back bridge over a river. And so the cars will go over the top and there's the curve and then the flat road surface. So possibly see that it's beginning to sag but it is fairly strong so on my engineer's journal I then drew, drew my second picture and I thought this bridge is stronger it can hold more weight but it cannot span a large gap between the towers because if we just come back to my humpback bridge here it's only got that distance it, it couldn't go any further because if the towers were further apart then it really would collapse down so i thought right i'm going to make a bridge using some triangles so what i did what i did was I got some wooden sticks and I started making triangles and at first I started to stick them together with glue but I didn't have much success with that so what I did was I got some tape and I'm not having that much success with this tape either When you're doing this that you need a bit of assistance because this is a, something else where really you need three hands so I stuck one like that and then I'm going to put another one on the top so I'm making a Z shape then you could put some more and you could put one down there now because it's going to get a bit boring if you're just sitting watching me do this I made one now if you just look at this one you can see there's the long line and 
another line there and then putting the sticks diagonally makes lots of triangles so it's very strong and it will easily span 30 centimeters now what I've done is I've got some card to put on the surface that's like the tarmac road surface and then I can put my weights on and I think you can see quite easily that that's not it's just not moving at all and in fact I could probably even put some heavier weights on now I'm only using these tins because they're all the same size and so it's easy to work out how many how much weight I've got and you can see it's taking all that weight and it's not moving at all so this is a very strong bridge and often bridges and I think what happened there was, see the bridge itself hasn't broken, but what has happened is that the weights slipped and fell. But the bridge itself is still intact. And I've put here, this bridge is much stronger. This is because the triangles cannot be squashed. And I did think, right, that's probably the best bridge I could do. But then I remembered that Albert had given me some pictures of bridges. So we've already talked about the humpback bridge and this bridge is a, a railway bridge and it's lots of humpback bridges in a row. So that means that you can take it along a long stretch. And that is my uh, triangle bridge. That's what they call a box girder bridge. Now, can you see, because it's try having to span quite a long distance, it has to have pillars in the middle. Now, that might be a bit of a problem because you might not be able to get things underneath. So, a man called Isambard Kingdom Brunel thought about this problem because in Bristol they've got the River Avon and the ships have to get up and down the river and a bridge like this girder bridge wouldn't allow the, the ships to get in. So he came up with this bridge and this is called a suspension bridge. Now I wonder if you can think why it's called suspension really it's because the bridge is suspended over the water and the pillars are on the top of the Clifton Gorge and you can see on this picture that on the other side of the pillar you've got wires and what those wires do is they actually support the bridge and I've made a model of it and it took me a long time so but um, if you can just bring the camera around this is my suspension bridge and the way I made it was I made the two pillars first I've got some cardboard somewhere so what I did was I got a piece of cardboard I folded it so that I could make a pillar and before I stuck it together I cut out a hole for the road to go through and then I got some tape and I stuck it to make my pillar. And then what I did was I got a piece of cardboard for the road 
so that's like that bit there. Now, that wouldn't be very strong. So what I had to do was I had to then make the, the uprights here. Now in a real suspension bridge, they are made of steel. And what I decided to do was to use a straw and a pipe cleaner. And what I did was I fed the pipe cleaner up through the straw. I worked out how high it needed to be. That's a little bit too high. Shotted it off. So that's the same length. Now you can see that I've got a bit of pipe cleaner left. That would be important. And then what I did was I made a hole in the cardboard. Can I just take that out for a minute? So the pipe cleaner goes through the cardboard and then I do another one on the other side and then twist the pipe cleaner underneath. And then what I did was I got some string. So quite thin string. And I got quite a, a long piece so that it was long enough to go right the way through my bridge. And then I got a What you need to do is you need to push the string through the cardboard and so you've got your, there's your pillar, there's your string to tie down at the back and then you've got your string that will go round to the other pillar and then your pipe cleaner will bend over to secure it on the suspension bridge and then do that all the way along and each of the pillars is slightly shorter than the last one so that you get this curve and you can see that that is very strong and the wires at the end, they are helping to support the, bri the bridge itself. So all of the stress is coming down these wires and that makes it very strong. So in terms of how much it can hold, my suspension bridge here can probably hold one of these quite easily. So what I did was I built up a Lego tower like this. So I had two bricks and then two across and then I had a few more so that I've got something to support the tower. And in a real life suspension bridge that's what happens. In the Clifton suspension bridge the, the actual tower goes further down in the ground so it's got a big foundation so that it's really sturdy. So there's my suspension bridge and what I haven't done is I haven't put my wires on that side as well and so I probably would want to write here this bridge is very strong.
strong, it can span a large gap and those wires there are really helping it. Now I hope you've enjoyed watching the bridge building and I also hope that you will have a go at building your own bridges and we'd love to see some pictures of bridges that you've made and how much weight they can hold. And so that's it for this week. I hope you'll join us next week when we're going to do some more exciting science.